Keith, I want to welcome you back to the nursing show, and um, it's great to have you on the show again. Um, just uh, to reiterate, uh, maybe you could just introduce yourself again to the folks and, and tell them a little bit about yourself and your background, and then we'll get started. I really want to hear about your new book. Sure. Thanks, Jamie. It's always an honor to be here. Thanks for inviting me back. And for those of your audience who don't know me, my name is Keith Carlson. I've been a nurse since 1996. I've worked mostly in ambulatory care, case management, et cetera. I'm the CNO and the DON of a home care agency in Albuquerque right now, double role. And I'm a nurse podcaster, writer, and the main thing I do is I'm a holistic career coach for nurses. We'll have to get into that a little bit too, just to find out um, what, what, what you're doing for nurses in that regard. Um, now, I know you've got a new podcast, um, that re relatively new since the last time we talked to each other. Um, you're the co-host of the RNFM radio podcast, but you're also, you also have the new nurse, nurse Keith show. Why don't you tell folks a little bit about um, what you're doing with that new podcast? Sure. So the Nurse Keith show was launched in January of this year, January of 2015, and it really focuses on career advice for savvy 21st century nurses. That's really what it's all about. So this shows the episodes tend to be between 15 and 25 minutes and we focus on very discreet things like LinkedIn strategies, resumes, interview skills, career building skills. So each episode is very targeted. I focus on a fairly narrow thing that people are asking me about or my career coaching clients are presenting as relatively common problems and I have fairly robust show notes with resources so people can find that over on my website too so it's really fun and I'm in the middle of a move right now if I turned my camera around you'd see all the boxes in my office I'm not going to show you and so I've been a little remiss in terms of podcast this month but I'm going to be back on the three to four episodes a month starting in September great well I know folks will look forward to that as well I've been trying to um, you know, re retweet and uh, share on Facebook and things when I see the episodes come across. And, um, and just it's a, it's a great service you're providing by giving that resource uh, for career building for nurses because uh, there isn't really anything out there. I mean, it's a different type of career path. Um, what, what is the most, just out of curiosity, what is the most common question you get from people that you're coaching? Well, it depends because I have several different segments of clients who come to me for career coaching. They're almost all nurses. I've had a couple non-nurses, but the nurses specifically, if they're new nurses, they're trying to figure out what the heck they're doing and they want to demystify some of the things they learned in nursing school because they're finding they're not true. And they're trying to figure out how do I start this trajectory of this new profession? What do I do? So that's the new nurses. Then I have the mid-career nurses who come to me who are either changing specialty, going back to school, or they feel like the gas has kind of run out on their career and they need to either retool, pivot somehow in their career, start a business, or just get re-inspired by what they do. So some of it has to do with people just wanting to figure out what's next. And then I have some older nurses who've been in the profession for a while who are just looking to either create a side business as they're moving into their retirement years or they just want to kind of kind of look at the the autumn of their career and figure out okay how do I want to spend this next 10 to 20 years before I retire so I get all those different ones the majority of my clients are new nurses and mid careers so it's really interesting and there's a lot of commonalities and then some differences between those different cohorts of nurses. It must be very satisfying to be able to help people uh, find their direction in, in, in a time when they're, they're lost in their career path. Yeah, it's really fun and I just this week two of my clients actually found jobs they're really happy about so I'm thrilled and I don't make anyone promises when they come to me. I don't say at the end of our three months together you'll have a job because I can't control those external factors. But I work with them on interview skills. We do mock interviews. We go over the questions that so many nurses seem to be afraid of to be asked during interviews. I, I'm really leaning into LinkedIn right now because I feel like nurses are not utilizing LinkedIn the way other professionals are. So. Apparently, as far as I can tell, I'm the only LinkedIn expert on the internet who's also a nurse and a nurse entrepreneur. So 
I'm really trying to preach the gospel of the importance of LinkedIn and networking. Oh, well, and, we'll have to we'll have to chat about that maybe in another segment because that's interesting right. to me as well. Um, sure. And this kind of leads into the, your your new book. Um, I was was you know chatting, going through Facebook the other day, and you posted the cover of the <laughs> book, and we're really excited about it. And I I have to say, great cover design, um, and. I was drawn in immediately by it. Um, it's called Savvy Networking for Nurses, Getting Connected and Staying Connected in the 21st Century. And it seems to tie right back into the things we've already been talking about. Um, so it seems like this is just a natural springboard from your podcast and your, your business as a coach. Right, exactly. So people have been after me to write a book for a very long time. Excuse me. <clears throat> and I found that with all the writing and coaching and then working as a director of nursing, writing a book just keeps staying on the back burner or maybe taking, being taken off the stove and being put in the fridge. So <laughs> I'm actually exhibiting at the National Nurses and Business Association Conference in Las Vegas in October and I realized I really need to have something on the table other than business cards and a book made a lot of sense. Yeah. So. Renee Thompson and Kevin Ross and Elizabeth Scala and other people have been after me to write a book. So I thought, okay, I'm going to write a short, very digestible book and then make it part of a five book series on different aspects of careers. So this one focuses on three things, face-to-face -face networking skills and why it's important to even bother networking, then online networking skills, which includes social media um, and LinkedIn especially, that's kind of the focus. And then personal branding, because if one wants to really put oneself out in the world as a savvy professional, you have to think about your personal brand. And I find many nurses aren't comfortable with that particular notion, so I'm trying to change the conversation around what branding is, because many of us have negative associations with the concept of branding because people think it's manipulative, but I'm actually trying to convince people and teach them that personal branding is really about it's not a logo it's not it's it's many more things than that it has to do with how do people feel after they've been around you and experienced you so what feeling state do you leave people in when they've worked with you i mean that's what personal branding has a lot to do with that's fascinating i you know i, I i'm an entrepreneur so i think about branding all the time um, but I hadn't really thought about it as a, an idea, a concept of personal branding in, as a professional to help you with your, furthering your career. But it's so true. I mean, it is about, uh, you know, my wife's a, an executive in the banking industry, and she prides herself on the fact that she builds careers for the people that work for her, that, you know, people don't stay with her very long because she helps them find the next step in their career path and mm -hmm. encourages them to move on and do other things. Um, and, and I think that's what you just said is very much um, lends, leads back to me thinking, you know, that is her personal brand as a professional and, and that, that she's seen that way and, and other people, other mentors guide the people they're mentoring to her to uh, forward their career path. And, um, it, you know, it's interesting that you would say that. Um, it, what is it that... You said nurses resist this. Um, what, where would a nurse need to promote her personal brand um, in the process of finding a job? Is there a way to do that? There's so many ways to do that. So branding comes down to many things. First, there's image. So when we think of brands, we think of logos, right? Like Apple, for instance, or T-Mobile or something like that. So sure. Personal branding has to do how you present yourself as a professional. Do you look nice? Do you, you know, do you present yourself in a professional manner? That's sort of the superficial aspect of branding. Then we have to look at when you're hanging out with colleagues, when you're at an interview, if you're networking, if you're having lunch with someone, say chatting with someone on the phone or Skype like we are right now, what do the people experience about you? Do you listen well? Do you communicate well? Do people feel heard by you? Do they feel seen by you? What do they experience of you as an individual? And that all adds up to this package of who you actually are. And many of us might feel 
that we've been manipulated by brands over the years. You know, there are brands we might have felt loyal to and then we realized they were doing some nefarious thing and all of a sudden that brand has kind of lost favor with us, right? We could probably name dozens of brands like that. So you as a person, as an individual, you're the CEO, quote unquote, of your career, of your your personal company, because you are your own little company in a way, moving in this world of professionals. And during the course of your career, people are experiencing you. They're, they're the people who might write you a testimonial or be a reference for you for a job. So when you ask someone to be a reference for a position you're applying for, and that person, say, writes a letter or they get a call from the HR person at the place where you're applying, say it's a hospital, that hospital official calls your, your contact and says, so what's your experience of Jamie? That person is actually going to reflect back to that person who called them, your brand. Mm. Well, Jamie is personable. Jamie is ha, pays great attention to detail. He's always dressed well. He's well groomed. He interacts with patients really well. He's a great team player. He always shows up on time, and he's collaborative and cooperative. So that's part of your brand. And if you don't build that brand in various ways, then people won't necessarily know who you are. Does that make sense? Absolutely makes sense. And I hadn't, you know, when you put it in those terms, it's very easy to see how important personal brand is um, when you come into those situations because it's not only about how you present yourself in the interview situation, but is that consistent, is there consistency to your brand? Um, mm -hmm. Is it consistent with what that person might find out about you, for instance, looking around on your social media posts or following up with your references or past job performance? Um, and, and so that, that becomes so important, um, the, the consistency aspect of it. Exactly. And it comes down to things, you know, simple things like your resume, your cover letter, your LinkedIn profile. When you send in a resume and cover letter, is it on really nice paper? Is it printed on a laser printer? Does the letterhead match between your thank you letter, your cover letter, and your resume? Is it the same? That's branding too. So, you know, if you decided to print all of your resumes and cover letters, no, I don't recommend this. Don't get me wrong. If you were going to print it all on green neon paper, that's part of your brand. They're like, oh, that's the green neon nurse who's applying for a job. And your resume will probably end up in the recycling bin. So don't brand yourself in that way. But if you brand yourself in terms of you meet with someone for an informational interview, you send them a handwritten thank you note in the mail, that's part of your brand that you reach out personally. And some people have brands that are a little impersonal or very businesslike. My brand tends to be kind of warm and fuzzy and personable because that's, that's how I am. And one thing I like to tell people, too, is that in terms of your online presence, sometimes you might have the experience of meeting a person in the real world, in real life, who you've known online, and they seem completely different from the picture they paint online. So what I also like to talk about is authentic networking and authentic branding that, of course, you don't post every little thing that happens in your life. Well, actually, some people do, but <laughs> most people. You paint a certain picture of your life. Mm -hmm. However, when someone meets me in person, for example, my hope is that what they've seen online actually is fairly aligned with what they experience when they sit down and have a drink with me. So. Part of it, that authenticity, is that your authenticity online and offline should match up pretty well. Yeah, that's so important. Uh, it, and I, I, I run into that all the time. I go to conferences, and I always say to people, I'm, getting, I'm going to meet somebody for the first time that I've known for several years. Exactly. You know? <laughs> and, exactly. and you're right. There, uh, there have been those instances where I've had this disconnect walking away from that, that uh, meeting and that uh, online acquaintance for the first time face-to-face. And it just wasn't, it didn't seem right it, that, you know, that, that it was this disconnect between what I thought about them based upon their online presence and the conversation I had with them in person was, led me to think that they were a different person. Not necessarily a bad version of that no. person, but different. And, and so that's, that's important. Exactly. And, and I know and I acknowledge we do edit our online presence. That's a given. You know, we don't post pictures of ourselves 
looking horrible on our Facebook page generally, unless we're like asking our friends for advice on our haircut or something. Mm -hmm. But or we're being extremely transparent. So editing is fine. But people should still take away sort of your essence of who you are. And if you feel like what you're presenting online, especially as a professional, isn't in alignment with who you actually are, then you have to really think about what you're trying to do and what your goals are. Excellent. So the book is Savvy Networking for Nurses. When's it coming out and how can I get a hold of a copy? Um, All right. Because that's what the people that's what the people are listening to this because I know there's a lot of nurses out there that are thinking, wow, this sounds like the perfect book series of books for me because this is book one in a series of five, correct? Right, exactly. It's called the Nurse Keith Career Mastery Series. Oh, awesome. And I'm not exactly sure what books two, three, four, and five will be on. I have a long list of topics and part of it is I'm waiting for the reactions to this book to see what people are hungry for. And when I hear what people are hungry for, that's how I'll target how I how I choose what two, three, four, and five are going to be. And those will be published over the next, I don't know, maybe two years. So this particular book will be available at my website on nursekeith.com. I'll be talking about it on RNFM Radio and at the Nurse Keith Show. It'll be on Amazon, of course. So it should launch right around October 1st. Great. Because I'm going to the National Nurses and Business Association Conference that first week of October. So the launch is going to be pretty much timed with the NNBA conference. If anyone's going to Las Vegas or they want to go, there's definitely room at that conference. I'll be exhibiting there. I'll have 100 copies of the book. But it'll be available as an ebook and then print on demand through Amazon. Great. That's, that's actually how my MedMath Simplified book is run right. um, through uh, print on demand and Amazon. And um, you know, I think it's a very successful program for, for any author. So uh, I'm, it's good to hear you going that way. Well, I can't wait. I'm going to, you know, if you put it up for pre-order, I'll definitely pick up a copy. Um, Thank you. What, what, is, um, what is the one thing you'd maybe like to leave with the nursing show audience uh, about think, how they think about their careers? Is there one piece of advice you might offer generically to nurses and student nurses about um, how they should be thinking about their nursing career? Sure. That's a good question. I like to think of a career as an organic growing, changing entity. It's not something set in stone. So as you make decisions on your career, of course you might take a job that doesn't fit very well and you need to move on. That's pr really okay. Look at your career as an organic entity that you're molding and growing alongside with the whole way through your life. And that career can be very transparent, it can be very authentic, like I said, it's an organic thing, and just kind of allow yourself to move alongside your career and see it as something that you can mold, that molds you, and that you can make various decisions regarding your career and no decision can be undone. So unless you give up your nursing license and you need to, you know, get it back again. So see your career as this as this fun, not like a game, but it's more like a journey. And it's a journey that can be really enlivening and really enjoyable and just relax and watch it grow and be open to possibilities and serendipity. Great. Well, Keith, uh, thanks for coming on. Um, this is Keith Carlson, nursekeith.com. Uh, check out his podcast, check out RNFM Radio, and, and be ready for the book, Savvy Networking for Nurses, coming out right around the uh, 1st of October. So we'll uh, definitely definitely be watching for that. I'll be retweeting it when you announce its availability, and we'll get, uh, get the word out to the rest of the nursing show audience about it. Thanks so much, Jamie. It's been a real honor, as usual.